Astronomers just found a galaxy so distant and so shockingly advanced that it's breaking every rule in the cosmic playbook. The James Webb Space Telescope was sent to glimpse the universe's baby pictures, but instead it spotted a colossal galaxy, fully formed and chemically complex, just 280 million years after the Big Bang. Current science says this shouldn't be possible. So are our theories about the birth of everything deeply flawed? Or is something even stranger happening out there? If a single impossible galaxy can force a rewrite of cosmic history, what else are we missing? The boundaries of the universe have just been shattered, and the story starts with the limits we thought we understood. Back in the 2010s, the Hubble Space Telescope stood as our cosmic time machine. With its 2.4 meter mirror, Hubble could peer deep into the universe, collecting faint light that had traveled for billions of years. Astronomers pushed it to the edge of its capabilities, stacking exposures for days to catch the faintest whispers of ancient starlight. The furthest galaxy Hubble ever confirmed was GN-Z11, clocking in at a redshift of 11. That means the light left GN-Z11 when the universe was just 400 million years old. For years, that was the record, our best glimpse at the universe's toddler years. But even at that distance, the galaxies Hubble detected were rare, faint, and barely resolved. The cosmic frontier looked like a wall. Beyond a certain point, the universe became too dim, too stretched, too red for Hubble's eyes. The laws of physics and the limits of glass and metal kept astronomers stuck at the edge, staring at smudges just out of reach. Every attempt to go deeper ran into the same problem. Hubble's mirror just wasn't big enough, and its detectors missed the faintest, reddest light. The universe's first galaxies, the ones that built everything that followed, hid behind a veil Hubble simply couldn't lift. For a generation, that was the ceiling. The earliest chapters of cosmic history remained sealed, waiting for a new kind of telescope to break through. Then came the James Webb Space Telescope, and everything changed. With a 6.5 meter mirror, Made of gold-coated beryllium, Webb collects more than six times as much light as Hubble ever could. That's not just a bigger mirror, it's a whole new class of cosmic vision. Webb is tuned perfectly to the infrared, the exact kind of light ancient galaxies give off as their starlight gets stretched across the universe. To keep its instruments cold enough to catch these faint signals, Webb sits one million and a half kilometers from Earth shielded by a sunshade the size of a tennis court. That setup lets it see farther, fainter, and redder than anything that came before. In its first months of science operations, Webb started smashing records like it was built for it. One of its earliest triumphs, spotting a galaxy named Jade's GS Z14-0, nicknamed Jade's Galaxy, with a redshift of 14.32, for context, redshift is the universe's way of telling time. The higher the number, the further back you're looking. A redshift of 14.32 means that light left Jade's galaxy just 300 million years after the Big Bang. That's not just early, that's cosmic dawn territory. But Webb's real superpower isn't just distance, it's detail. It can break down a galaxy's light into a chemical fingerprint, revealing what elements are present and how stars are forming. With this level of sensitivity, astronomers can finally move from guessing about the universe's first galaxies to actually measuring them. The cosmic wall that Hubble ran into, Webb just kicked a hole right through it. Now the earliest chapters of the universe are finally in play. Mom Z14 isn't just another distant smudge on a JWST image. This galaxy, clocking in at a redshift of 14.44, means its light left just 280 million years after the Big Bang. That's so far back, the universe was still shaking off the afterglow of creation. But here's where things get weird. Mom Z14 is bright, not just barely visible bright, but shining like a cosmic lighthouse at a time when the universe should have been mostly dark. Its absolute UV magnitude is minus 20.2, putting it in the heavyweight class for such an early era. The galaxy itself is tiny, only about 74 parsecs across, 
yet it packs in a stellar mass of about 100 million suns. That's more than enough to rival some of the satellite galaxies orbiting the Milky Way today. By every model, galaxies this early are supposed to be struggling. They should be small, faint, still assembling their first handful of stars. Instead, MOMZ14 looks like it's already hosting a star-forming party and forgot to invite the rules. The light we're seeing eyeing isn't boosted by a supermassive black hole or some cosmic trick, just pure, raw starlight from a galaxy that's somehow gotten a head start. Think about what that means. The universe was barely 2% of its current age, and yet here's a galaxy burning bright, loaded with young stars, and already showing up as a standout in a JWST deep field. No hiding, no waiting for cosmic dawn to fully break, just a tiny, compact powerhouse lighting up the early cosmos. It's the kind of find that makes astronomers stare at the data, blink, and ask if their instruments are playing a prank. If MOMZ14 is real, and the evidence says it is, then something about our understanding of early galaxy growth is missing a major piece. And the only way to find out what's going on is to dig deeper into its makeup. Spectroscopy from Webb's near-spec instrument didn't just confirm MOMZ14's distance, it cracked open its chemical secrets. Instead of the expected bare-bones mix of hydrogen and helium, MOMZ14's light carried a signature that stopped astronomers cold, a strong spike of nitrogen, and not just a trace amount. The nitrogen to carbon ratio is off the charts, higher than anything seen in typical galaxies from this era. In plain terms, that means this galaxy isn't just forming stars. It's already churned through at least one full generation of them, recycling gas and seeding its surroundings with elements heavier than helium. That kind of chemical complexity usually takes hundreds of millions of years in multiple rounds of star birth and death. Here, it's showing up barely 280 million years after the Big Bang. What's powering all that light? Not a black hole, surprisingly. Webb's data shows no sign of the telltale X-rays or the broad emission lines you'd expect from an active galactic nucleus. Instead, the energy comes straight from stars, lots of them burning hot and fast. The spectrum is loaded with UV emission lines, including strong nitrogen and carbon features, with equivalent widths in the 15 to 35 angstrom range. That's the kind of signature you get from a galaxy in the middle of a star formation frenzy, not from a galaxy quietly aging in the background. The kicker? Nitrogen like this doesn't just appear overnight. In our own Milky Way, you only see it in the oldest globular clusters, dense, ancient pockets of stars that have been around since the dawn of the galaxy. Yet here it is, in a galaxy from the universe's first few percent of existence. Some theorists think the answer might be runaway stellar collisions, where stars in crowded clusters merge into supermassive stars, cooking up nitrogen in their cores before exploding and spreading it through the galaxy. Whatever the mechanism, MOMZ14's chemical fingerprint is clear. This is no cosmic toddler. It's a galaxy that somehow lived a fast, complicated life before most galaxies had even started to form. And that's a problem for every model of the early universe we've got. Lambda CDM, the reigning theory of cosmic evolution, sets strict limits on how quickly galaxies should form and grow in the early universe. But as the James Webb Space Telescope scans deeper, those limits are getting steamrolled. Instead of a handful of faint, struggling galaxies, astronomers are counting dozens, sometimes hundreds, of compact, red, and unexpectedly massive objects in every deep field. These aren't just statistical flukes. The so-called little red dots and red monsters are popping up in numbers that outpace predictions by factors of 10, 100, sometimes more. At redshifts above 8, the observed number of galaxies with stellar masses greater than 10 billion suns is up to 100 times what Lambda CDM models expected. Even after correcting for survey bias and cosmic variance, the overabundance stands. Some of these galaxies pack as much mass as the Milky Way, but they're showing up just 600 million years after the Big Bang, far earlier than any simulation dared to place them. And it's not just one survey or one patch of sky. C-E-E-R-S, 
Jades, Fresco, N, G Deep, all are reporting the same trend. Too many, too massive, too soon. The standard rulebook says these galaxies should be rare, sluggish, and chemically primitive. Instead, the early universe looks crowded and busy, with star factories running at full throttle. The numbers don't just hint at a minor tweak. They're pointing to a systemic problem. Every new deep field is a reminder that our models for how galaxies build up mass, and even how dark matter structures form, might be missing key ingredients. If the laws we've trusted can't explain this cosmic traffic jam, it's time to ask, what are we missing? Some scientists see these wild new galaxies and reach for the cosmic toolkit. Tweaking star formation rates, adjusting merger speeds, hoping a few new equations will patch the holes. But for others, the data points somewhere stranger. What if the universe isn't just expanding, but rebounding? There's a theory, serious physicists are debating it, that our entire universe might be the inside of a black hole. In this view, the Big Bang wasn't a beginning, but a bounce. Matter collapsing in some parent universe, crunching down, then erupting out the other side as our cosmos. The math actually lines up. Both black holes and the universe have horizons, singularities, and a kind of cosmic censorship. And if that's true, what we call the edge of the universe could be the event horizon of a black hole, with everything we see projected from a deeper, hidden reality. It's a mind bender, but the more galaxies Webb finds that shouldn't exist, the more these once outrageous ideas start to sound like real possibilities. If the universe is stranger than we imagined, maybe it's because we're still thinking too small. In 2023, the James Webb Space Telescope identified galaxy MOM Z14 at a redshift of 14.44, just 280 million years after the Big Bang. Its unexpected mass, brightness, and nitrogen abundance directly contradict established models that predicted only small, simple galaxies at this early era. Archival observations from both Webb and Hubble confirm that the number of massive, mature galaxies in the first few hundred million years is much higher than theory allows. Yet, how these galaxies formed so quickly and why they are chemically advanced without a central black hole is still not explained by current physics. Official reports from the Jade survey and peer-reviewed publications all agree. The Lambda C DM model once the backbone of cosmology, faces a critical test. As of today, every new web discovery adds to these unanswered questions. The evidence shows that our understanding of the universe's early years is incomplete, and the search for answers is only beginning.